the lead at four. What the defense says is the motive for the murders of Maggie and Paul Murdoch. Yesterday, jurors saw a cell phone video that prosecutors say placed Alec Murdoch at the scene of the crime. Then came testimony from Rogan Gibson, a friend of Paul Murdoch, whose dog was staying at the family's kennel at the time. Gibson testified he got a call from Paul in the kennel at 8.40 p.m. and recalls hearing Alec Murdoch's voice in the background. The defense contends that Alec was not there at the time. Most of today's courtroom action had to do with legal wrangling over Alec Murdoch's financial crimes and if they should be included in testimony. WSAV's Andrew Davis has been in the courtroom from day one. He joins us live from outside the Colleton County Courthouse with what else happened today. Andrew. Now, WSAV. Well, he has admitted to dozens of financial crimes in admitting to stealing millions from his clients, his family and his law firm. But the question still remains, should that evidence be allowed in the courtroom and in front of a jury? Well, that was the focus of much of this morning's hearing. It all started, though, with one witness in front of the jury and a Snapchat video taken by Paul Murdoch just over an hour before he was killed. Well, it may not look like much, but actually the focus should be on Alex's clothes. This was taken at 738, a little over an hour before the murders happened. And Alex wearing a completely different shirt and pants than when he was in interviewed by investigators after the killings. Now, after that, the jury was dismissed and the focus was on a hearing to determine if the more than 90 other criminal charges in Alex's alleged financial schemes can be told to a jury. Gene Seconder, the chief financial officer of PMPED, the law firm that Alex used to work for, testified that she confronted Alex about missing fees, $792,000 in total. But before she could get a final answer, she says Alex got a phone call. He took a phone call in the middle of that conversation. That phone call was about his father that was in, who was in the hospital, that he was going to be terminal, and that there was nothing else they'd be able to do for his father. So that changed the mood of the conversation. We quit talking about business. Now, Seginger testified for more than an hour about these schemes, how he used a fake Forge Consulting address to try to take that money from his clients to the tune of $2.8 million in one category alone. The defense says this is a murder trial, not about financial crimes, and that evidence should not be presented to a jury. The judge will probably make a decision on that tomorrow, but first he's going to have to hear more of the people involved in this and more witnesses in that part of the case while the jury is out of the room. We also heard a lot more about Maggie's cell phone, where it was found, and how it could connect back to these killings. We're going to have more on that tonight at 5. Andrew Davis, WSAV News 3 in Walterboro. Back to you. All right, Andrew, thank you. And we have followed every step of this case. To watch a daily feed of the trial or keep up with our live blog, go to WSAV.com slash Murdoch.